Hello, hello. Um, my first acting role, uh, I was fired from. I was playing the backside of a camel. Uh, so I'm thinking that things have gotten better from there. Uh, so I've come here to tell you about, um, well, what it is that one does as an actor and uh, what you can use from what one does into design as well. So as an actor, well, if you're playing mainstream uh, cinema roles, it's about uh, as exciting as skydiving because most of the time you don't have a role. Anyway, so what I was trying to say was most of the time you're looking for work. Uh, the time spent uh, looking for work is, is really large and the actual time spent acting is a tiny little fragment of one's imagination. But that little fragment makes all of the rest, the other universe, sort of worth it. Uh, trolling the internet is totally worth it because, well, you can actually act that one second of time. When people say you're going to be an actor, they say ambiguous things like become the character. What does become the character mean? I mean, it makes no sense. Uh, if, if I was to become the character, what would I have to do? Um, perhaps I would have to be spontaneous and in the moment, which is another truism. What does it mean really? How can you be spontaneous and in the moment while you're being conscious about being spontaneous and in the moment? You'll lose the moment entirely, right? So it's fairly simple. What you do when you're spontaneous and in the moment is a fairly simple formula. One, be Super prepared, be hyper prepared, learn those lines like the back of your hand. I'm really bad in Hindi, even worse in Tamil. And what I do is I memorize my dialogues like, like a maniac. I am sure that my hair is just right. Everything is down pat because being super prepared really helps being in the moment. Number two, silence the voices. What are you thinking? I'm not sure. I'm worrying about what you're thinking. What I'm thinking on the inside, oh my God, is my hair not right? Is my uh, co-actor flirting with me? Oh my God, what's going on? All these external voices as well as internal voices get in the way of being in the moment. It's just white noise, right? So silence those voices. Just keep it calm. Now, how do you silence voices? Well, you can fill it up with other things. Like, for example, when I'm just going into a shot, I fill it up with my dialogues. Because for me, that's my weakest link, right? Uh, I have to get the dialogue spot on. Uh, so I fill it up with other things so that I don't have to think of the 3,000 things in my head and externally that will distract me. So silence the voices and be super hyper, scarily prepared. And three, be absolutely besharam. Like, don't worry about the fact that my cleavage is showing. You just have to be absolutely shameless. It's, it's harder said than done because sometimes when you're acting, and you know that there's about 5 billion people watching you, uh, you're scared to be extravagant with your arms. You're scared to be a little too loud. That, that shamelessness is what will make you from good to great. So it's a fairly simple equation. Silence the voices, be absolutely besharam, and be hyper-prepared. I basically mean be Arindam Chaudhary, who is completely shameless, uh, thick skin like a buffalo, and persistent like fungi. So be super persistent, be thick skinned and be shameless. Now if you get that equation wrong, if you're a little too shameless and um, if you're a little too persistent, you might go to one extreme of the spectrum or alternatively you might go to the other extreme of the spectrum. So this is what I've learned, uh, this is what I keep doing as an actor. I try to be as shameless as possible and as prepared as possible. And uh, this is what one does when one casts oneself. So what do I mean by casting myself? When I walk into a room, I want you to know immediately that this girl is an actor, for example. I cast myself according to what I think you should have seen me 10 years ago. I was quite different than I am now. I have chosen to be this way. I've chosen to present myself in a certain way, which is appropriate for the moment, which is appropriate for this role, right? So if you want to be an actor and you are a middle-aged uh, man, uh, who is slightly balding, it might make sense to play to your strengths and cast yourself appropriately for what you want to do. You have clarity of vision and you cast yourself. So how do you cast yourself? Again, there's, there's so many truisms and be spontaneous, be in the moment. Well, like I said earlier, you have the same equation, casting yourself as you with a role. You be super prepared, you silence those voices saying, oh my God, I'm too fat, I'm too thin, is my too long, should I get those jobs, so on and so forth. Silence those voices and be shameless. So this is how you cast yourself. So, this is what I've learned as an actor. The question is, what am I doing with design in that case? Well, 
I'm playing a double role. And when one's playing a double role, then one's casting oneself uh, simultaneously. So let me show you, let me be shameless and show you a little bit about where I get my money from. So this is how I earn my living. showing you this is maybe a little bit because I'd like to show you about my work, but also because I want to show you how I managed to fund my last six years of being a designer and being an artist. Now being a designer is a rather expensive proposition, especially the way that I'd like to practice it. One prototype is not enough. You need to make eight, ten prototypes before you perfect it. And then in the last minute when your manufacturing guy decides to redesign all ten of the products on his own will, then you have to pay for the next batch. So what I did was I took all of the money, well some of it, some of it I traveled, I took some of the money from uh, these films and I put it into making the art and the design that I've always wanted to. So it started with this, this product it's called the Pink Sink and it's 10 years old now, it's a very old product um, and it's a chair and it was fairly simple and I designed, uh, decided to start this because it's just metal and fabric. So I could perfect it. I could make 20 different uh, versions of it and uh, not uh, break the bank in the process. So as you can see, the pink sink can be sat on. And the pink sink sort of evolved into various other chairs. And it started a company. It's actually allowing me to sustain designing the kind of things that I've always wanted to design and in, uh, inventing, in a, innovating in a way that is sustainable. Thank you very much. Oh, and uh, please sit in the chair. It's here for you to sit on. Vega, before you go. So I heard that uh, the bungalow that you have your studio in is about 150 years old. It's true. Um, what was it like entering the bungalow and, you know, making it the, the, you know, the picture that we saw? It was an absolute mess. The floor, there was no floor. Uh, there was no ceiling. Uh, there were termites everywhere. The, it was a mess beyond belief. It took us eight months to restore it to the space that it is now. And now I can feel all pleased with it. The opening was just two days ago, so we're really happy that, um, you know, she finished her launch and could make it here today. Good luck for your um, film, and I'm sure everyone would uh, love to watch it. And good luck with everything. And thank you so much for thank coming you. here.